Dear uh, bookish friends, um, I'm back once again with a little bit of a book haul and an update. Um, I have been reading, but I've been reading in sort of a like sampling little, um, you know, finger food kind of uh, small plates, molecular gastronomy way. You know I had to check out another collection of the Bukowski poems from the library. I got through the horse one, which is really long, and I liked that one. And then I sort of got fatigued and I sort of, you know, put that one to the side. Kind of on theme, you know, I, I, I started reading A Farewell to Arms and the sex is good. The, the, uh, the, the gore is really great. It's nauseating. Um, the language is like, um, I was also taking a look at Cot in the bath the other day. And I, you know, I came to that conclusion. Everybody else comes to that, like, <clears throat> the artist wants to show that, like, the war has dismantled, has, like, um, you know, uh, uh, war kind of cuts down these structures of sentences and you kind of have to either like build them back up, uh, without, with, with, with whatever tools, with just your bare hands, or you need to kind of just act as though those structures that were there just aren't there anymore. Um, I think maybe these writers do that on a sentence level or something. I also think that rereading this soon is going to be really fun. I also have a book of nut containing nothing, doting and blindness, and uh, that's going to be really fun to get to. I've also been reading, and this is like uh, something that's not going to surprise any longtime viewer of this channel. I mean, you guys know, I love, uh, I just really like John Ashbery, and uh, just like many of us do. And I'm also like, he's kind of a cute figure. Like there's just, you know, like he's hot on the cover of uh, three poems and stuff. And he, um, he's just, he, his reading voice is kind of cute. Um, look it up on the Pen Sound uh, archive. You know, and uh, he's just an endearing presence. Um, he's an inspiring and kind of a calming presence. And also Karen Rothman's book is really good. I've already made one video on it, but you know I had to run that back. I just saw it at the library and I ran it back and I'm just a couple pages in. You need two bookmarks for it because it's got the notes and it's got the main text. And um, where am I right now? Oh, I'm right here where Richard is being an, uh, a pest, quote unquote, kind of a pest. Um, yeah, I mean, that's just like, you know, that's out of context, but it's been really beautiful so far. I've been thinking about uh, being an audiobook person. Like, I kind of want to be an audiobook person. And so I've been reading things aloud to myself more. Um, and I think I lack the, the audiobook reader's ability to really act all of the different voices well. I think plain narration I'm fine with, but um, maybe I should try experiments like that with that Bernhard you guys have been saying I should get to. But I even, um, I read some of this aloud. I read like five pages of this aloud into a voice memo and was listening to it and enjoyed it. So, you know, I've been kind of reading things piecemeal. I've been taking lots of other stuff off the shelf and kind of, um, you know, and kind of taking little nibbles here and there. And so that's why you haven't seen any kind of long form videos, but I have been reading. Also have been reading uh, Difficult Loves. Um, um, I have really been enjoying this and I think the kind of the way it's structured has kind of been throwing me off a little bit, but maybe uh, more on that later. Um, I recently got this book haul. I, I had a day to myself and I was doing some shopping over in the half price books areas and like, you know, I drifted in and I got all these books for like $10 and this Bret Hart book I've been thinking of for a long time. It's these condensed novels. I really like this cloth that books from the 1880s are bound in. I also have a uh, Washington Irving from that time. And uh, just wondering what people think of it. Wait, what's that there? I think that's just, that's just some, some stain of some, some kind, something got on it. Um, anyway, um, I saw this book. It's an ex library book, as you can tell, because there's a, uh, there's a um, Dewey decimal uh, number written on the side. Um, I saw this, this book at Half Price Books a long time ago. It has one page that's falling out. I think that might be why it was so heavily discounted. Um, it seems like a good book and like, I'm really excited to read it. Basically it, it, it became further on sale and it was like $2 and so I had to get it and I'm really excited and I really want to have it read to me aloud this weekend if possible. Look at what a cool place it came from. Monasterium es Laurenti, Beacon, New York. You can see from the table of contents, you can see from the table. You can see from the table of contents that it has um, parodies of different writer writers. Like you can see Turtles, Dukens, and Alexander Dumas. I've taken a peek into it and I've already loved what I've seen. Really looking forward to reading that book more. 
Um, there's The Story of a Shipwrecked Sailor by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Um, I like this a lot. It was on sale for $3. And um, it's an early thing. It's these articles. I'm just really excited about it. It's very slender. It's from the 50s. It already has a really attractively, like, kind of, you know, you know these titles, these article-like titles in the middle. I just know it's going to be fantastic. And it's also a good bridge from any uh, Hemingway I've been reading lately to just other stuff. Because I know that Gabriel Garcia Marquez is like a big Hemingway, um, you know, disciple. Um, I think he was he was really into Across the River and Into the Trees or something. Really like this, and it's going to be in my Gabriel Garcia Marquez kind of nonfiction collection, which I want to include News of a Kidnapping too. It already includes um, uh, Living to Tell the Tale, Vivir para Contarla, and um, uh, um, Clandestine in Chile. Um, I also got this. This was on sale for $2. It's this great copy of Helmut Wilhelm's uh, lectures on the I Ching. Basically, my friends and I have been consulting the coin oracle a lot lately. Um, we all have this, I think like two or three of us have this book and it gets passed around and used a lot. Um, I, first was I first encountered it in college and it's the one with that beautiful cloth um, when you take, it, take uh, off the dust jacket. Highly recommend you get a copy of this book and take a look, unless you're like really, really um, opposed to Carl Jung, which I, you know, I understand many are. Um, uh, and then I also, the thing is, is I bought it because it was just cheap and beautiful and I thought it might be an addition to my, to my uh, collection, but then I forgot that I already have Understanding the I Ching, this kind of expensive paperback that has all the Wilhelm lectures on the Book of Changes. So basically it has the entire table of contents of this other book, and then it has these lectures, Constancy and Change. So um, shows you how much I know and how much I've read. But anyway, uh, there's that addition to my kind of I Ching library. And then this is kind of a crown jewel. Um, I was looking on eBay after I bought this and I couldn't even find this cover anywhere. It's a 1988, roughly 1988 Penguin edition of Sometimes a Great Notion, a novel that I've been meaning to read for a long time ever since A, I read Ken Kesey's uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest in, co in high school, got a good grade on my essay, I think, and really liked the book too, maybe as a result of, of that. And also knowing that it was kind of like an edgier book, like it had an R-rated movie. I thought that was really cool. Um, so ever since that whole era, and I have been meaning to revisit that One Flew Over a cuckoo, the, the Cuckoo's Nest uh, book. I now know who Joe Sacco is, for instance, so I, um, I can appreciate the cover better. So A, I, I did that, and then B, I got into big novels, and they say like other books, other, other copies of this book say, oh, it's Ken Kesey's big novel, you know? Um, the blurbs are absolutely excellent on it. The toastedness is great. It was just two dollars, and it it's like kind of toasty, um, but it like it opens up nice, and I can just tell from reading it like that dialogue seems good, and it and it just still seems like that kind of kind of symbolic thing, that high school vibe. Um, I'm really excited to read it, and I think this is just about the most pretty cover I could have gotten for it. It gives me that like uh, you know Tennessee summer camp, East Side, um, East Side Madison kind of. Um, somewhat dilapidated mansion vibe. Anyway, I just wanted to kind of like show you that haul. So it's sometimes a great notion. We got Helmut Wilhelm, uh, eight lectures on the I Ching. We got this great copy of the story of a shipwrecked sailor, which I would be very excited to read soon and condensed novels by Bret Hart. Um, all for under $10 if you care to know. Um, so yeah, so this video isn't really super in depth or interesting or anything, but um, I just wanted to like, uh, I just wanted to kind of chat with you all and just kind of let you know that I am reading. <laughs> um, thanks for watching and happy reading.